My uh, nearby Chevy dealership just recently started getting the uh, SS models in. The Chevy SS has an engine that produces 415 horsepower, 415 torque. So already it's well below that of the SRT392 engines in any of the SRT vehicles. This car is built in Australia and it's imported to America and basically it's like a larger version of what you get in a Camaro or a Corvette. Now the one problem is there are some options that I noticed that doesn't come with like ultra view roof, um, power tilt and telescope steering wheel, and it also doesn't have a fold down trunk. Some people may want to consider those. Bridgestones. At first glance, this car looks a lot like the uh, Chevy Impala, but it's not until you actually uh, get inside that you see there's a lot of things about it that are nothing like the Chevy Impala due to the fact that the Chevy Impala has a front-wheel drive platform and this has a rear-wheel drive. Now, thus far from what I'm seeing, rear seat space is pretty good. Like, because it has like a long, flat back, rear seat space looks to be pretty good, um, especially when compared to my 300. So even with all this rear seat space, there's still a lot of front seat space for a relatively small um, passenger to sit in. And you can obviously put these seats like way up in order to um, create slightly more space for the back. But no, seat space is not a problem in this car. Now this car stickers at $47,000, right? It's not as powerful as a 392 Hemi, but it, it has a lot of power for those people who wanted a Chevy that has a V8. Now the dash cluster is pretty interesting. Like they have digital gauges right right here so that you can see the uh, temperature and uh, this is the uh, radio and whatnot like the when i uh, get into one and uh, turn it on you'll be able to see those things uh, function right now you have the chevy miling system come on um this this car right now is inside the actual dealership the other one that i'm actually going to use to drive just to do some like a zero to 60 and whatnot that one's outside so um the system is way better, in my opinion, than the current version of uh, Ford's Uconnect. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Chrysler's Uconnect is probably the best system in the business. Ford's system is not that great because it doesn't have the, the redundancy of having buttons and a touchscreen. So if you don't want to touch the touchscreen, you don't have to. You should always have voice controls, steering controls right here, and you should also have the ability to choose whether or not you want to touch the screen. Some people don't want to reach that high. But um, this is a pretty nice dashboard. It's a soft touch suede that goes all the way around. This is the first time I've seen buttons like this right here for the heated and cooled seats. This is actually a good idea because it's right where you can see it. The Impala put them down here. Let's see. We have a USB port, an auxiliary port, 12 volt. Mm -hmm. Parks, uh, rear parking assistance. It's the build track on and off parking brake. Hmm. Now this is the wheel. Now the wheel here has a manual. It has a manual uh, switch. 
my car, my SRT8, came with a power adjusting wheel. This one has a tilt and telescope. You know what, for a $47,000 car, this one really should have uh, the power one, but it doesn't. So this is tilt and telescope. I'm really surprised that they did that. This should have been powered. Now, once you have it in the exact position that you want it to be in, you're supposed to reach back down and you push this, this lever right here, and once it clicks in, it's locked. Now you're in driving position. Hmm. Yeah. So this is a system very similar to the Buick. They have a heads-up display right here, that you can see right here. The heads-up display is like the uh, XTS. The Impala had a slide up and down screen here, but this one has a fixed screen. Please say a command. Tune to 97.1. Please wait until after the beep to speak. Tune to 97.1. Bluetooth phone is not available. Tune to X, uh, FM 9... Please say a command. 97.1. Bluetooth phone is not available. <sighs> Please say a command. Home. Bluetooth phone is not available. Uh, uh, how do you go to wait FM one point nine? Oh, they have to rebate. There's something for everybody. Okay. I wonder how to make it work with the. Uh, oh, this one. Okay. Um, the steering wheel controls are very similar to what you see in the Malibu. Plastic shift paddles. I don't know why you put in shift paddles if you're not going to go all the way and make them that metal. You know, Chrysler did it way better, but uh, a lot. See, the problem is a lot of this car feels plasticky. A lot of this car, like Chrysler, has a way better way of dealing their interiors now, where it doesn't feel as plasticky. Most of the surfaces are uh, soft touch instead of being plastic. They're not expensive surfaces, but they're soft touch, so that makes it feel a little higher end. But um, I don't know why. Why, like, the, I mean, I, I, I didn't like that in the Lincoln MKS. First of all, I don't think you need shift paddles at all. If you've got an automatic transmission, you really don't need shift paddles. Because the thing about it is when you put the car in sport mode, it automatically raises and lowers gears where it feels that it needs power. So I really don't agree with them putting shift paddles in these cars. But um, the way I see it is if you're going to put stuff like that in, it should be made of metal. Now you have a regular glove box here, it's big enough for gloves and CDs, there's nothing really special about it, but um, all in all, it's a, it's a pretty spacious car, from what I remember when I saw this car at the uh, New York Car Show, it's a pretty spacious car, the only downside is, um, in my opinion, it, for one thing, it's not as powerful as the SRT8 392s, the Challenger, the Charger, or the 300, and that's just one thing. Then you get to the nitty gritty about it, and the interior really feels about the same level as the Chevy Malibu. It doesn't seem much better. I'm gonna take a look and see about trunk space. Oh, what's this? Is this some kind of slide out? Oh, okay, this is a cup holder that slides out of the chair. I wanna check and see if this car has fold down seats, because one of the things that my um, uncle didn't like about his MKS EcoBoost is the fact that his seats don't fold down. He only has the rear pass through. But this has a lot of headroom, which is good. I don't know if an uh, UltraView double panel moonroof is optional, but that would be nice. But um, basically, okay, so I see heated cooled seats, which is really cool. Um, I'm pretty sure it has the uh, it has a number of crash avoidance systems, so that probably means it also has adaptive cruise control. Pretty much all these cars have them. Um, the electronic slip protection, it has uh, electronic stability control. So pretty much most of the features that my car has, it has. There's just, I don't know what it is. It's, I've never really been attracted to GM cars that much. I mean, I had leased one a long, long time ago. Uh, what was it, an Escalade XT? But I've never really been attracted to that cars. And it's like even like the some of the panels, some of the panels just, they don't feel as good as they could be. It's like everything's just 
everything's so plasticky. Now the Chrysler has plastic in it too. I'm not going to, I'm not going to just say that you know this car has plastic. I don't have a problem with plastic because it's easy to clean. My only thing is, why are all the American sports cars so dark inside? It's like maybe you know they could just do a little bit more to offer you better cuts and better presentation. You know, because small as plastic, the first thing in somebody's mind is going to be like, why should I pay fifty thousand dollars? For this car but of course the answer is you're not really paying for the car you're paying for the engine because this is pretty much the only chevy that you can get a four-door and you can get a v8 engine in that's not a truck you know so that is worth considering and that's the reason why one of the reasons why chrysler is doing so well is because here they have the challenger the charger and the 300 and you can choose what engine you want to get as well as what transmission you want to get you have a choice between a five speed and an eight speed most people want the eight speed anyway because of the uh new shifter and because of the fact it gives you a little bit more miles per gallon but um gm and ford need to make a uh, rear wheel drive and they need to make v8 engines optional for people who really want them let me uh take a look at the uh trunk space and the engine bay see how easy it is to put in a navigation point because that's one of the reasons i like you connect so much they make it really easy to do that what you do is you touch the nav button you push nav or you can push destination and you put destination it says address entry city new york okay city que okay queensbury how about queens street how about um 177 Street. Okay. Oh, you, you have to, you can't, you have to be careful not to lay your fingers on the seek buttons because if you push seek, the computer will seek and it'll lock out the nav system. Apparently, the computer's not strong enough to do both at the same time to seek a channel and do the uh, nav. So you have to be very careful with your thumb. House. Okay. Uh, I'll just push in a random number four, five, Okay, let me see if I push down, what'll happen. Okay, start guidance. Okay, calculate route. The route has been calculated. Please follow the highlighted route to your destination. Okay. All right, so it's pretty simple. It tells you in blue what your route is. Now, is there a way to zoom in and out? If you could zoom in and out, yeah, the zoom in and out is the seek knob. And when you zoom in and out, it lets you see the biggest route by you can you can see up to what is it 300 miles anything between 50 yards and 300 miles so you can see the majority of you know obviously you'd want to use it right about there so this way you could see the the best part of the route all right so so far this system looks um pretty decent and again, I like the fact that the heated and cooled buttons for the seats are right here. Because this is something I've never seen anybody really do before. Never put it up here. Instead, they always put it like down here. But I like that. Very nice. Okay. So this is the trunk space. Okay, this has a very wide, wide, wide trunk. Now, I'm looking back here. And from what I can see, it really doesn't look like this has a fold-down seat. It looks like it has a center pass-through. But that looks like that's, it, that's, it, that's as far as it goes. Okay. Earning points, we have a full-size spare, which even my Chrysler 300 SRTA did not come with. And not only is it a full-size spare, but it's a full-size spare with a rim. That definitely gets you extra points. And not only does it have the rim, but it also has a matching Bridgestone tire. And this tire, the Bridgestones that this car runs are 245-40R19. So we don't have 20-inch wheels. Again, these are 245 40 R19 98Y, and these are bridge stones. So, um, you know, I, I, you do get the points. You do get these are what is it called? Bridgestone RE050A. You do get extra points for having a full size spare with a full size rim. I like that, and I wish my Chrysler had it. Now, if I wanted to, I could carry around a full size spare with a full size rim, but this car came with it like all cars should. Unfortunately, you don't have a back pass through. Okay, gas tanks on the right side. Okay, yeah, these seats, I don't think these seats fall down. 
Yeah, this is the center pass-through. The seats do not fold down. When you do fold this thing down, you have access to the back and you also have two cup holders in the back of this plastic pass-through. And uh, it looks like they have a trunk release right here so that if you're a kidnapper and you're trying to kidnap some stupid little kid, they can pop that son of a bitch open and they can get right out and alert the authorities. And then you go to jail for the rest of your life. Oh, quaint. There are no heated and cooled seats or heated seat options for the back. And there's no heated button right here, so this car does not have heated rear seats. Fuel economy. Yeah. Okay, this is yeah. the engine. That would be fine too. Yeah. Because if front wheel drive, I might be able to keep you exactly where you're at and still give you all this nice stuff, which is just nice to have. You know, remote start, remote yeah. car. Yeah. I have your current payment. Oh, that would be lovely. And still get the two thousand down. Yeah. Let me let me take a look. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to look. Like I said, this is kind of like worst case scenario. Because I'm not. I wasn't really sure where you wanted to be, but now I got a better idea, and I know it. <coughs> This is the car. It's a pretty good looking car. Brimbro braking system. This is everything that the Lincoln MKS should offer. The thing about it is they need a better quality interior. Less plastic, more soft touch materials, more leather, more suede. If you're going to make me spend $60,000, you're going to have to give me what Jaguar is giving me. So once again, dual zone air conditioning. Now, there's a gas guzzler tax of $1,300, there's a power sunroof for $900, and there's a spare wheel that costs $500. $500 for one wheel plus tire. Hmm. Happens.